comes a point in our life where, you know, we just gotta grow up a little bit. And I think the car equivalent to that is going from like a Honda Civic to the old Honda Accord, all right? Especially the new ones, they look absolutely killer. And of course, when you throw some aftermarket wheels, tire suspension on them. So today, we are gonna be going over the ultimate fitment guide for such car, the ninth gen Honda Accord. Is that is a super popular one in our gallery. And I think the 10th gen coming up really quick here too. But today we're gonna be covering the ninth generation. So from 2013 to 2017 of the Honda Accord, we're gonna be going over wheels, tires, suspension, any other suspension components you're gonna need to make sure that, you know, when you go buy wheels, tires, and suspension for these cars, that you're gonna do it the right way the first time. So we're gonna go over a couple different setups using our gallery over at fitmentindustries.com. And of course, you know, once we're all said and done with that, you can go look for your own wheels, tires, suspension over at fitmentindustries.com as well. It's like, it's like the perfect setup. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. So what we're gonna do is break this down into kind of like three different setups. First off, we're gonna go over the daily driver setup, all right? So this is gonna be for those of you out there who want something different but don't wanna ruin the drivability of the car. They don't want it slammed on its nuts. They don't want a super aggressive fitment. You don't wanna to have to deal with like rolling or pulling fenders or buying camber arms or anything like that. This is gonna be just a super simple aftermarket setup. So. The suspension, you're gonna be looking at some sort of lowering spring. You're gonna be looking at an 18 or 19 inch wheel, anywhere from an eight to eight and a half inch width, and sticking with right around a plus 35 offset. 235 tire should suit you well for that width, and that's really all you're gonna need. So we got a couple examples here that I pulled from our gallery. First one we got is a 2016 Accord EXL. Now it's on some Avid One AV20s. So this is an 18 by eight plus 35 wheel. We got some Pirelli all season tires, 235, 45 on some Tane lowering springs. So as you can see, pushing out the wheels a decent amount, even with an eight plus 35, these cars honestly don't take that wide of a wheel. When we look at kind of the Civics and stuff, um, seems like they took a little bit wider of a wheel, but the Accords, not so much. We do have a pretty decent tire on there. Like I said, this is an all season tire, uh, so you're not gonna get like a ton of stretch. You don't need it for this setup, but overall, if you're looking for something that you want to throw just an aftermarket setup on, here's a good starting point for you. Next up, we're going with something a little bit bigger so you can still get good daily drivability out of it, but you want something maybe a little bit bigger. So we're going with a 19 by eight and a half plus 35 and there's some niche Targas, all right? So these are Federal Evolution ST tires, 235-35 on H&R lowering springs. So the H&R looks like they get a little bit more of a drop than those Tanes did. The Tanes didn't seem like it dropped it too much, uh, but these H&Rs seem like they drop it a decent amount. So no other modifications here other than the lowering springs and wheels and tires, and honestly, I prefer this setup just a little bit more, helps fill up that wheel well a little bit. You don't have as big of a tire on there. You get a little more drop in the ride height. Uh, I think it looks really good. So the 19 by eight and a half plus 35, if you're looking to go to the daily driver route, I would suggest going with something like this or at least using this as a starting point uh, to see what else is out there for you if you don't like those wheels specifically. Moving on to the second category that we have, we consider this to be the flush setup. So this is gonna be something that's gonna be a little more aggressive, a little bit wider. Uh, you're typically gonna be seeing coilovers for the most part for this kind of setup. Um, so someone who you know can still daily drive their car but wants it to look a little uh, more modified. So it's gonna be a little bit lower, a little more aggressive fitment. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna be looking at coilovers for the suspension on here, 18 or 19 inch wheel, eight and a half to a nine and a half inch width, and a plus 35 down to a plus 22 offset. Tire size, we're gonna be looking at a 225 to a 245, depending on the width. And then we do actually see some other additional suspension pieces come in here in far, as far as like rear camber control arms uh, and things like that to kind of help, especially with that rear fitment. Um, fender modifications, uh, rolling, roll your fenders. If you're looking at going this route, it is recommended. You're not gonna need a palm or anything like that unless you're going super crazy uh, or super crazy low, or you really need to clear stuff out of the way. But usually if you're going with a flush setup, we highly recommend getting your fenders rolled. So we got a few examples to look at here. First one, we got 2016 EXL. Now these are some NKTS 10s, 18 by eight and a half plus 35 on some 245-40 tires on some Tane coilovers. So these are some Flex Z coilovers. I had them personally. I absolutely love them. It's a great entry level coilover. It gets all the adjustment that you need, your damping, height, and camber uh, in most cases. And this is a very flush setup. Nothing other than rear SPC, tow camber, and trailing arms. So they've got some of that stuff in the rear to kind of help dial everything in. It seems like that is kind of needed on these cars. A lot of the ones in the gallery do have that stuff listed, especially with this kind of setup. But other than that, it looks really good. You get a really nice flush setup with not too crazy of a 
uh, a wheel and tire package so you're not like breaking the bank or anything like that with like a 11 wide or something like that. You can stick with an 18 by eight and a half and get the job done just fine. It looks really good. Second example we have for this is this 2016 as well. And this is on some Enki Ryzen's 19 by eight and a half plus 35. So very similar setup before, but this is kicking up to a 19. I do kind of prefer the 19s on these cars. We got some Atsu tires, 245, 35 on some BC racing coilover. So as you can see, pretty tight fitment in the rear, tucking just a little bit, but we're gonna throw it in the flush category because it's like, you can play with that tire size and ride height a little bit uh, in rear camber and stuff like that. Uh, no modifications other than, it doesn't list that the fenders are rolled, but I would again recommend that. Um, it doesn't look like any other uh, suspension components are listed. So this again, it's another solid, like daily drivable flush setup that you can take a look at. And then one more to close out this category. We're gonna take a look at this 2015 LX S. Now this actually has a staggered setup on it, which is a little bit odd uh, for a front wheel drive car. But with this car, I've noticed that that rear fitment is just kind of goofy. A lot of times when people run a square setup on here, they're having to run some sort of spacer or play with the camber or do something in the rear to kind of get that to fit a little bit better. Uh, this guy just run a staggered setup, which is not uncommon, but not the most common, I guess you could say for front wheel drive cars. But we have some Novia Elders, 18 by nine and a half plus 35 in the front and an 18 by nine and a half plus 22 in the rear. So literally instead of running a spacer, they just went down in the offset, which is essentially what a spacer does anyway. But you do get a little more concavity with the plus 22. Uh, Vercelli Strata tires, 225, 40 on some true heart coilovers. And honestly, fitment on here looks pretty dang good uh, from the pictures. No other modifications except for the rear camber arms uh, and a couple performance stuff, but didn't have to modify the fenders much or if at all. Uh, honestly, it looks pretty dang good. So now if you wanna go kind of balls of the walls with your ninth gen Honda Accord and throw it like on some really low coils or you wanna throw it on some air suspension, get some more spicier fitment, we have that too. Now. I couldn't narrow down just like a general fitment guide for the aggressive setup. It is kind of all over the place. It doesn't seem like there is like a true one and done fitment for uh, this kind of thing. It really depends on, you know, what you're looking to run for camber or what, how low you're looking to go. We just decided to pull a few examples from the gallery. So we got four here that we're gonna look through really quick, uh, starting off with this 2016 Honda Accord Sport. Now this is on some TSW Oslo's and these are a 19 by 10 plus 38, so a pretty wide set up, but a bit of a higher offset to kind of pull it in a little bit more. Uh, we got a 235-35 tire on some True Heart coilovers. Now as you see, this looks pretty dang good. It is a pretty aggressive fitment on this car, and especially a 10 wide on an Accord front and rear. That is pretty wide. Obviously your fenders are gonna be rolled on something like this. I would almost even recommend, depending on all of your other setups to get them maybe just pulled a little slightly, especially in the front, uh, just to clear room for that wide of a wheel. And depending, of course, on your ride height. So that is a good one to start off with. We're gonna keep going up from there. Uh, like this 2017, we got some on Anha and DSO6s, and these are a 19 by nine and a half plus 22. So going down a bit in the width, but really kicking that offset down too. So really push those wheels out. 225, 35 tire on some BC racing coilovers. Now, as you can see, this is getting pretty pokey. Um, depending on how much camber you want to run, I would say you could get this to be uh, pretty much fender to lip. Um, if you want to do a static setup or something like that on this car, um, but yeah, this is another option that you can go with. Really playing with that offset is what's gonna um, matter here. Offset plays the biggest role, I would say, in your fitment. A lot of people think it's width, but the offset is really what's gonna put the final factor into everything. Third example we have is 2016 Accord EXL. Now this is on some Work Emotion CR Kiwamis. Now again, we have a staggered setup. We have a 19 by nine and a half plus 25 in the front and a 19 by 10 and a half plus 22 in the rear. So it's not like a, a true like staggered, like, oh, we have it's a nine and a half, plus 22, 10 and that plus 22. Like even the offsets vary. It's just kind of a goofy car to find some good fitment for, but it is possible. And we see a 225-35 tire, uh, BC racing coilovers. And we do see this is a very, very aggressive setup on this car. And it does look like they are even running a five mil spacer in the front, in the rear. I don't know if that's a clear 
uh, some sort of break or if it's to clear um, some sort of inner clearance or something like that, uh, but that is a five mil spacer front and rear, so just keep that in mind. And then finally, we thought we'd give an option for air suspension if that's the route that you wanna go. So we have a 2013 here with some ESR SRO9s, 19 by nine and a half, 22 square setup, front and rear on some Kenda tires, 235-35 on some D2 racing air suspension. So as you can see, looks pretty dang decent. That rear, again, though, is gonna cause you a bit of a trouble. You're either gonna need to run some sort of spacer or run a staggered setup if you really wanna get that rear dialed in or you're gonna to have to go with some like toe and camber arms to really kind of play with it but that rear is going to cause you a little bit of trouble on these cars if you want something super perfect it can be done it absolutely can be done just take your time uh, do some research uh, head on over to the gallery you find one that you like a lot go after that you can we have a calculator over there as well um, to punch in your width and offset and compare that to other widths and offsets to see where your outer position is going to be on the wheel we have a lot of resources over there uh, for you guys to use and that is specifically what this gallery and website was originally Originally made for to help you guys find your fitment. So hopefully this helped guide you guys in the right direction, at least give you a decent starting point for this car um, if you're looking to do some aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension for it. And don't forget, head on over to our gallery. We've got hundreds and hundreds of these cars in there with aftermarket stuff on it. Odds are there's probably something in there that's gonna suit what you're looking for. And don't forget, there's wheels, tires, suspension, and even performance parts for your ninth gen Honda Accord over there as well, fitmentindustries.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a message or drop a comment down below. I'm Gels from Fitment Industries, and we'll see you next time. Bye.